we are not alone. National Geographic, uh, March of this year. And I've had this when I first started looking at UFOs this year in preparation for the Red River Prophecy Conference. And it just so happened that this came out the same month. But it caught my attention this morning. So I walked by this desk and I saw that laying on there and it just occurred to me. What is National Geographic? I mean, National Geographic talks about penguins and tortoises and naked women in Africa and all kinds. I mean, they talk about that kind of stuff. Since when did they get into the extraterrestrial entity business? Because that's what they're saying. Scientists say there must be other life in the universe. Here's how they're searching for it. So you have what I call nuts and bolts scientists. Scientists who only believe in what they can see, feel, taste, smell, uh, measure with whatever instrument they have. That's what this kind of scientist does. And if you were to ask these kind of scientists, like the Carl Sagan types, do you believe in aliens? No, that's crazy. That's nonsense. That's, you know, trailer trash believes that. Uh, do you believe that there's life on other planets? Oh, yes, there has to be. What's the difference. They're aliens. If they're not from this planet, they are aliens. So now you have, and, and here's what I see. There is a concerted effort, and the word concerted means that they are all in concert together. A concerted effort among those in the field of religion, metaphysics, the supernatural, astronomers, biologists, different types of scientists, and the UFO experts, and those in the media, those in politics, those in business. It really, um, Robert Bigelow, the multi-billionaire who invested the $22 million for the Pentagon to spend running ATIP, the Advanced Aerospace Threat Identification Program. Robert Bigelow builds modules to put in the space station for a future time when man is going to be living in space. And on the outside of his manufacturing building, he's got the silhouette of a gray alien on it. And he's the one that said, when he was asked, do you believe in aliens? Do you believe that there are extraterrestrials? And he said, the proof of it is right here under our noses. Absolutely, he believes it. So this stuff is coming out. So then today, I get up. There is an article. Remember, the New York Times. New York Times did this piece about the Pentagon spending all this money and they're the ones that released the videos, the Go Fast UFO, the Gimbal UFO, and the Tic Tac UFO. These are all three UFO encounters that members of our armed forces both engaged, encountered, physically saw with their own eyes. At one point, they, we had these guys in jets out on a training mission. And they get a call in from the fleet commander saying, what are you armed with on that, on that plane? He's like, are you kidding me? We're in training. We don't have arms. And he was thinking maybe, you know, there was terrorists trying to come in. Catalina Island is where they were. And they said, no, we need arm because there's something close by you. You guys need to go and probably engage. And it was the Tic Tac UFO. Okay, that was, what, 2004, I think. So the New York Times comes out with an article, and, and the New York Times never deals with UFOs, ever. But now they come out with this realistic article saying they're real. Now you have the Pentagon coming out for the first time ever since Roswell, since the day the, the ship crashed and they found it outside of Roswell, and the Roswell Air Force Base announced to the world that they had retrieved a captured flying saucer. They said it. They released it to the news. They released it to the press. 
It was all over the radio. The next day, as soon as the guys upstairs got a hold of it, they said, we need to cover this up. If it wasn't a saucer, that, what do you say saucer? We didn't say saucer, we meant a weather balloon, come on. So for the first time ever, the Pentagon comes out last year and says, these things are real. And you have to, you have to grasp this. Yeah, there's UFO hoaxes. There's always been UFO hoaxes. Just like there's been ghost hoaxers and lying people everywhere. But you have to ask yourself, if just one of the over 12,000 UFO investigations done by Project Blue Book, if just one of those was true, you have an alien ship flying into planet Earth doing God knows what. What are they here for? Where did they come from? So then this morning, I see this article coming up on Drudge Report. This is the New York Post saying 2019 was banner year for credible UFO sightings. Once thought to be fictional works used to sell tabloids, 2019 has been awash with news of UFOs, aliens, and strange phenomena, including reports complete with video from verifiably sane sources. In May, the Pentagon admitted it investigates UFOs soon after Navy pilots claimed to not only have seen but recorded UFOs during training exercises in 2004 and 2015. In November, another report in Popular Mechanics confirmed that after the 2004 incident, two unknown individuals took the data tapes away and wiped the memory from the Navy hard drive. Why did they do that? What are they covering up? Meanwhile, just around the time the Popular Mechanics report was released, unidentified flying objects were captured on video off North Carolina's Outer Banks. I featured that and passed a mic online. As soon as it came out, I showed you the video. Um, Outer Banks and the Army announced a partnership with Blink-182 frontman Tom DeLonge, who is also a Freemason, to the Stars Academy to research alien technology. Are you listening to this? This is not tabloid talk anymore. You have the Pentagon getting in touch with Tom DeLonge because Tom DeLonge hired all the guys out of the CIA and the Pentagon. So they're the, ex they're the ones who were investigating these things for years. You guys got, you have guys like Lou Elizondo who ran ATIP, Hal Putoff. Hal Putoff, you know what he did for the CIA? Remote viewing. Seeing through somebody else's eyes 10,000 miles away. Okay, now they're doing this for real and they're looking at alien technology. They're slowly but surely, it's a drip coming out of the faucet. And when that drip first starts, you try to ignore it, which is what a lot of people are doing now. But the more it drips, see this is the disclosure that we're going to get. We're not gonna get President Trump or President Hillary coming out and saying, here's our aliens, here's the dead bodies, here's the crash at Roswell, here's our ships, here's our technology, and by the way, we've back-engineered this, and see that thing flying over there? That's not alien, it's our, that's not gonna happen that way. The drip is coming out, and after a while, you can't help but pay attention to the drip. And you're gonna, and pretty soon, the sink's gonna be full, and you're gonna say, they were right. These kooks who believed in UFOs, they were not wrong. Uh, but while astronomers say humans finding aliens may take a long time, 2019 was a particularly active year for UFOs visiting Earth. According to the National UFO Reporting Center on September 21st in Gallipolis, Ohio, quote, a husband, former law enforcement, and wife, scientist, while sitting outside their recreational vehicle at a public campsite. See, I told you it was trailer people, right? Anyway. A public campsite witnessed a very bright light approach their campsite from the south in an erratic manner, appearing to slow or stop on several occasions as it drew near. It got within 50 yards, they estimate, of their campsite, at which time, out of a sense of alarm, the husband reached for his 45 caliber sidearm, but he felt unable to use his arm or lift the firearm. Are you here? Our weapons of war are not carnal. They don't worry about bullets. 
This guy reached for his sidearm, former police officer, and all of a sudden he couldn't move. You ever had that dream where you were trying to run and you weren't really running? Or you tried to scream and all it came out was air? You ever had that dream? I have. This was real. The object estimated by the witnesses to have been approximately 20 feet in diameter hovered nearby for approximately eight seconds and then suddenly accelerated toward the west and disappeared very quickly to the west. And you have a former police officer and a scientist standing there going, did that just happen? Did that just happen? You see, they've had a paradigm shift now. They see scientists, these nuts and bolts scientists, if I can't see it and measure it, then I don't believe in it. She saw it. They measured it. It happened. It's real. They're not lying. And then they referenced a website that did a survey of the most UFO sightings in America and the least UFO sightings in America. Top five where you're going to see it, where you have a better chance of seeing a UFO places in the country, top five places where you are probably not going to see a UFO. And I found a correlation. Let's take a look at it. States with the most UFO sightings, Washington, Montana, Vermont, Alaska, Maine. You ever been to Washington State? What kind of politicians do they vote for? Vermont, Alaska, Maine. Places where they tend to be fairly liberal. That's another way of saying they don't read and believe the Bible. Then the states with the fewest UFO sightings, Texas, Louisiana, Georgia, Mississippi, Alabama, the Bible Belt. That's what I see. And in this Bible, and I, I talked about, I've talked about this several times, there is a direct correlation biblically between places where Jesus is not welcome. And in the places where Jesus is not welcome, the spirits house up there. Remember, Babylon is a cage of every unclean and hateful bird. Those are devils. But in the places where Jesus is allowed to at least thrive and be believed in, and his word is in place, you don't see them much there. I actually made a mistake when I first started talking about Betty Andreessen. Here's the three books, The Andreessen Affair, Raymond Fowler, The Andreessen Affair of Phase Two, Lifting of the Veil. First two books written by Ray Fowler. They investigated Betty Andreessen and they regressed her in hypnosis and had her go back. Going back 30 years ago, you know what they found out? That the same, I'll use the word spirits as aliens, that were with her 30 years ago, they found out that those same spirits were in the room the day they did the hypnosis sessions on her. Because at one point, those spirits talked through Betty Andreessen. Okay? Now, I made a mistake. First time I started talking about Betty Andreessen, I said that she was from the Bible Belt, Alabama. I don't know where I picked that up from, but I was wrong. She was from New England, the liberal capital of the United States of America. Now, she claims to be a Bible-believing Christian, and yet devils talk through her. So there's a lot about her that just doesn't add up to Bible-believing Christian. And I'm going to finish this today dealing with her and show you what she was initiated by. You know, I just remembered that at some point, Betty Andreessen and her second husband said 
that these aliens transformed from their original image, like little gray aliens, to beings of pure light. That is exactly, that is exactly what Paul said in 2 Corinthians verse chapter 11, for such are false apostles, deceitful workers, transforming themselves into the apostles of Christ, and no marvel, for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. Therefore, it is no great thing if his ministers also be transformed as the ministers of righteousness whose end shall be according to the works. Because Betty believed that those gray aliens were ministers, were angels. And she saw them transform literally into beings of light. Unbelievable. Just like Satan and his ministers transformed into angels of light. There's something else I remembered about be, right before Betty goes to where we're going here in a minute, concerning what she saw in this place where she was, because she kept seeing these three-sided pyramids. Kind of odd, okay? But she saw these pyramids, and like the, the corners were flattened off of them. This is how she described them. And on one side of it, there was a face, like the Sphinx, right, on these pyramids. You know what she said? She said that the face on these pyramids, one day, I don't know where she saw it, but remember, we sent this ship to Mars to take pictures. This was back in the 70s, first time we'd ever seen the planet up close. And in the Cydonia re region, all of a sudden now, Richard Hoagland found this. He worked for NASA. There's a big giant face there. Betty Andreessen said the faces that she saw on these three-sided pyramids look exactly like the face that in NASA's original photograph of the Cydonia region of Mars. Dun, dun, dun. Now, back to the phoenix. The devil, the serpent is more subtle. Okay, so if you're looking for an all-out, expose everything, one single day awakening to UFOs and aliens, if you're waiting for that, that's not how the devil operates. He operates one drip at a time, subtly. And what's happening is just as Betty Andreessen was initiated by a real live phoenix through the fire, so this world is also headed toward initiation. Right now, they're being taught. They're being convinced. I mean, think this phrase, we are not alone. This is meant to get into the collective consciousness of people all over the world to accept the idea that these spirits are really from other planets. They put us here, and they're coming here to check on us and say to us, you're not doing right, and uh, you've got some evil people. That would be us Bible believers, and we need to get rid of them. And, oh, by the way, we're going to change your DNA so you can become gods like us. So let's get our orientation here toward the phoenix that Betty Andreessen met. Let me go back to last week's just a little bit, and then we're going to move forward. The phoenix initiation. June 23rd was a Thursday. Our next hypnotic regression session was scheduled for that evening. The summer sun still shown as investigators and witnesses filed into the offices of the New England Institute of Hypnosis. We were totally unprepared for what was about to take place. Betty was about to undergo the most painful and emotional segment of her total experience. Her suffering and ecstasy would be contagious. What we were about to witness would become etched indelibly on our minds and in some hearts. That's from the Andreessen Affair. Now, we introduced last week the Phoenix. There he is, and according to 
all the, you know, all the writers like Manley Hall and maybe uh, Fat Albert Pike talked about him. And I know it's a, it's a big uh, imagery and masonry, the occult, mythology, things like that. We covered all that last week. But nobody really ever believed that there really was a real live phoenix bird. Nobody now believes that. And I've been trained as a watchman by the Bible. Things to watch for. Trained in symbolism and what things mean in the Bible. Like, for instance, when Jesus teaches a parable and he says, guy throws seed out. Some of it falls outside of where they plowed. It's by the wayside. Well, that seed, the fowls of the air, you can see birds down there eating it. And that's, you know, we would go, yeah, that's what would happen. But then he says, here's the meaning of it. When you see birds, think devils. Because they always swoop in to take away the word of God wherever it's sown. And this is in people's hearts when it just falls by the wayside and the devil comes in automatically and gobbles it up and there is no more seed, no more word of God to have an effect in that person's life. That's what that means. So when I see a bird in mythology, I think that's a devil. Anything with wings could either be a good one or a bad one. But in this case, it's a bad one, especially when it's this guy, Conchita Worst, that's a stage name. Eurovision 2015 is sort of like American Idol. So they have this contest. I think that's how ABBA got started, but back in the 70s. They entered a contest with, I uh, um, can't remember what song it was. It was about Napoleon, Waterloo, okay? And that made them big. Well, Conchita Worst does the same thing. And he, she, he, she, wins. The song that he sings is Rise Like a Phoenix. Here's the lyrics to this, and I'm reminding you of this. Take a listen. to If you think this is an initiation, think of it that way. Think of these words as this is your hymn sung at your initiation to be initiated as we go through the fire and are transformed. Waking in the rubble, walking over glass. Stop right here. Remember Betty Andreessen going to that glass world and touching the glass butterfly walking on a sea of glass like crystal? Remember that? Walking over glass. Neighbors say we're trouble. Well, that time has passed. Peering from the mirror. A mirror always represents a portal to the fourth dimension. No, that isn't me. Stranger getting nearer. Who can this person be? You wouldn't know me at all today from the fading light I fly. Rise like a phoenix out of the ashes seeking rather than vengeance, retribution. You were warned. Once I'm transformed, once I'm reborn, you know I will rise like a phoenix, but you're my flame. Now this was sung by a guy with the face of a man the hair of a woman, the spirit that's in him, her, him, her, is right out of Revelation 9 and part of the mighty army that God is going to, it's the spirit of Antichrist because the Antichrist is always androgynous. He's both male and female. This, he's the spirit behind all of the transgendered movement all over the world. He's the spirit behind the U.S. Navy starting to build in its port, San Francisco, a ship called the USS Harvey Milk. You know who that guy is? He was a, I think it was the San Francisco City Councilman back in the 70s. That was murdered. Poor guy, okay? But he was a pervert. And they're naming a Navy ship after a sodomite pervert. Look it up. That's the spirit. That's the Antichrist spirit that's out in this world. That's what's behind it because it's a fusion of opposites, male and female alike. And to everybody in this world, there is coming a day of transformation. This is why they're dripping out all of this alien UFO stuff. 
whether it comes from legitimate scientific sources or the New York Times or New York Post, wherever it comes from, there's a transformation coming. Here's the picture of the tares that look like wheat that in the harvest are transformed so that you know which one is wheat and which one is a tear. That's what Jesus said. We're going to wait for the harvest. He said, harvest, everything's going to change. Everybody is going to change. And Betty Andreessen saw it in real life. So now I'm going to read to you the transcript of what the hypnotist and Ray Fowler and maybe all the other guys that was in that room listening to her when the aliens took her to a place where she was initiated in front of a real phoenix. She said, I'm standing before that large bird. It's very warm. And that bird looks like an eagle to me, and it's living. It has a white head, and there is light in back of it, real white light, very, very big. And it has brown features, and it's it's very hot here, and she's even breathing heavy while she's remembering this scene, as if she was really going through it right now. The bird is just standing there, and it looks like it's holding back the light somehow. Stop right here. That is exactly this Bible. This Bible tells us that Satan and his Antichrist and all of his devils are the ones blocking there's a reason why they don't read the Bible and believe it up in Washington State. Now, there's some families up there. I've met them. They're good people. But you know that you're surrounded by crazy, hippie liberals. And that's where all the crazy, old hippie put in all their technology companies, right? Anyway. The bird is just standing there, and it looks like it's holding back the light somehow. I'm just standing in front of it, and it's so hot. The bird, the feathers are just fluffed out. The light seems so bright in back of it. It's beautiful, bright light. Oh, it's just standing there, and I see gold, gold specks flying around, like tiny, little tiny gold specks. Stop right here. You know, there's only like three places in the whole King James Bible where you'll find the number 603 score and six. One, of course, is Revelation 13. And I just thought of this just now. This, this just in from the Holy Ghost. One of the other times is to actually list how much gold came in to Solomon in one year. The number was 603 score and six. Now, for some reason, it's not an accident. It's not just a random number that they counted. And, uh, it's about 660, we'll call it six. That number's there for a reason. Latched onto gold. What did Moses do with the idol? What was that idol first? It was their God. What was it made of? Gold. What did Moses do with it? Ground it into powder. Then what did he do with it? He made him drink it. Look at the phrase, gods of gold, in the King James Bible. Use the Pure Bible Search software, purebiblesearch.com. Download it for Linux, Windows, or Mac. It'll work on all three. Study gold in the Bible. Study gods of gold in the Bible. You know, we're made of sodium, calcium, carbon. We're made of the minerals of this earth. You know what I think? I think there's actually some gods that are made out of gold. I know, I know it sounds crazy, right? But look at what she saw. I see gold, gold specks flying around. Look like little tiny gold specks. Then, get ready for this. Oh, it's hot. And she blows her breath out. <sighs> she is living this right now under hypnosis. 
she actually feels the heat on her body once again. The specks just keep flying around and that bird just keeps standing there. The light just keeps sending out rays. They keep on getting bigger and bigger. The rays keep on getting bigger and bigger. Oh, the, the heat is so strong. Oh, makes me weak. Oh, Lord Jesus, I'm hot. Help me. Oh, heavy breathing. Oh, begins to cry. I'm so hot. Oh. Now, you might say, well, she called to Jesus, right? What did Jesus say? Not everyone who cries unto me, Lord, Lord, is worthy of my kingdom. Just because you say the name Jesus or you say you're a Christian, that doesn't make it so. You have to be a, a son of God. You have to be born again. And you don't let devils talk through you. At that point, Betty began to scream in pain. Take me out of it. Take me out of it. Take me out of it. Oh, I can't feel my hands. Oh, wow, wow. Oh, my hands and my legs. My feet. Oh, it feels like my hands are just vibrating so much and my feet just vibrating like, oh, oh. There's the picture that she drew. See that line, that arrow? I stood about this tall before it. It looked like a 15-foot eagle, but its neck was longer. It spread its wings, shielding the light behind it. And then get ready for this. Because at some point, the hypnotist had to stop the regression because she was suffering. She was actually reliving this whole thing with the pain and everything. He was afraid she was going to die right there. Watch what happened. After the bird was transformed into a worm by the fire, Betty, see, this is what happened. The bird was lit on fire, the fire burning down, turned into embers, then gray ashes, then a thick clay-like gray worm that appeared out of the ashes. These five things happened where the large bird and rays of light were. So after the bird was transformed into a worm by the fire, Betty heard what sounded like many voices blended into one. You have seen... And you have heard, do you understand? Betty said, no, I don't understand. What this, is this all about? Why am I even here? The Voice. Notice they capitalized the V. That TV show, The Voice. You ever seen their logo? They do that. You know what that is? Above, blended with below. With the number five. Revelation 9, the fifth trumpet the five months that the waters prevailed in the days of the flood. Number five represents the five lords of the Philistines who represent death. They represent the five kings that were hiding in a cave and then they were brought out and they were smitten and hung on five trees and were there until the going down of the sun. Then they took them down and buried them and rolled great stone. I mean, that's what that number represents. It also represents the rapture, the transformation. I speak symbol. The voice said, I have chosen you to show the world. Betty said, are you God? Are you the Lord God? The voice said, I shall show you as your time goes by. See, that's not it. That's not an answer. That's not an answer. You know, when Nebuchadnezzar looked in the fiery furnace, he's going, that's the Son of God. When John was swept up in the Spirit into heaven, and he saw one standing on the throne. He knew who that was. The NIV says, someone was sitting on it. Betty says, are you my Lord Jesus? I would recognize my Lord Jesus. The voice said, I love you. God is love, and I love you. That's a setup, people. Betty says, why was I brought here? The voice, because I have chosen you. I'm sending you back now. Fear not, be of comfort. Your own fear makes you feel these things. I would never harm you. It is your fear that you draw to your body that causes you to feel these things. I can release you but you must release yourself of that fear through my son. The son is the son of Belial, the child of the devil, the seed of the serpent. It's 
not Jesus Christ, the Son of God. It's another Jesus, but not the real one. Betty later told the interviewers, I understand that I went through an initiation of some kind. Here's a book you can read, Fire of the Phoenix, Initiation, Transform Your Life with the Ancient Spiritual Wisdom of India, Australia, and Peru. See, that's all pagan magic stuff. You know what captured Betty's attention? When she saw the phoenix, she said it had its wings pointed down, its feathers pointed down. And she said that the first time the aliens showed up to her in her house, they were wearing a uniform with a patch on their arm. And the patch was of like an eagle-looking bird with its wings pointed down like, she said, it looked just like the Native American pictures of the Thunderbird. Those aliens were soldiers of the Phoenix. The Phoenix is a symbol of the Antichrist who rises up out of the burning hell to come on this earth. Indeed, upon investigation, we found that Betty, this is Ray Fowler talking, that Betty seems to have witnessed the death and rebirth of the legendary phoenix. Collier Encyclopedia, this is in the days before the internet, describes a bird almost identical to what Betty reported. Phoenix, a legendary bird that builds its own funeral pyre and is reborn from its own ashes. Sacred in Egypt, the phoenix, which was always male and had a beautiful red and gold plumage, was fabled to live for 500 years. There's that number five or longer. At the end of that time, it built a nest from twigs of spice trees to which it set fire. Both the bird and its nest were consumed in the flames. Out of the ashes, a worm emerged from which the new phoenix grew. Once again, we're going to go to Manly Hall. And here's what he said about the phoenix. To the ancient mystics, the phoenix was a most appropriate symbol of the immortality of the human soul. For just as the phoenix was reborn out of its own dead self seven times seven, stop right here, that's 49. That's the number of times, the exact number of times that the phrase word of God is in this Bible. That is also the exact number number of times that God's title of most high is in this Bible 49 times that title most high is precisely the last thing that was in the heart of Lucifer when he said seven words I will be like the most high this Bible catches these thieves in the act every time. It rises, it's reborn out of its dead self seven times seven. So again and again, the spiritual nature of man rises triumphant from his dead physical body. Medieval hermeticists regarded the phoenix as a symbol of the accomplishment of alchemical transmutation. That's Baphomet. Alchemical transmutation is salve coagula. And he's doing this, like this. This is a two, this is a three. This is 23 up here, and same here. This is a two, and this is three. This is 23 down here. What is that? 46. Chromosomes, humans, that's the number of words that the serpent spoke to Eve in the Garden of Eden in the King James Bible. It's the symbol of accomplishment of alchemical transmutation, a process equivalent to human regeneration. The name Phoenix was also given to one of the secret alchemical formula. In the mysteries, it was customary to refer to initiates as phoenixes or men who had been born again. For just as physical birth gives man consciousness in the physical world, so the neophyte, after nine degrees in the womb of the mysteries, was born into a consciousness of the spiritual world. This is the mystery of initiation to which Christ referred when he said, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. John 3, 3. What do you see? What number do you see there? The phoenix is a fitting symbol of this spiritual truth. 
Now, see it, I'm angry that they would take the Word of God and put it in their mouth. Because out of the same mouth issues forth water both sweet and bitter. Brethren, these things ought not be so. So when it talked about the nine degrees in the womb of the mysteries, nine is the number for fruit bearing. So do you know what God related to that? Do you know what God told the Israelites in Deuteronomy chapter 18, which is nine times two, 18 is six plus six plus six. Do you know what God told them to do? He told them, in Deuteronomy 18, 10, there should not be found among you anyone that maketh his son or daughter to pass through the fire, number one, or that uses divination, or an observer of times, or an enchanter, or a witch, or a charmer, or a consulter with familiar spirits, or a wizard, or a necromancer. Nine things. That's the nine, what do they call it? The nine degrees in the womb of the mysteries. All of this, see, God, God knew where this was headed. All of these things are meant when I hear the UFO people, all of them, Linda Moulton Howe, Stephen Greer, Grant Cameron, uh, some, of the, uh, some of the other names, the guy that ran the UFO Department of the Ministry of Defense in England, and some of these other names, you know what I hear them talk about all the time? In order to have the aliens really come to us and awaken us, man needs to has it have a change in his consciousness. It's all about raising consciousness, a transformation of how man thinks. And what's going to happen is God's going to send a judgment to this earth. These people are going to be transformed, and he's going to blow the candle of their spirit out. And that's what the word nirvana means, blown out like a lamp. The phoenix is a fitting symbol of this spiritual truth. Again, Manly Hall, the Egyptians occasionally represented the phoenix as having the body of a man and the wings of a bird. A human, like in, like in Ezekiel chapter 1. This biform, stop right here. You understand the symbolism? The body of the man is man. And it's man, not in his present state, but in his future state. For when he grows wings, he's Icarus. He believes that he can fly up to the heavens because now he's a god high and lifted up. This biformed creature had a tuft of feathers upon its head and its arms were upraised in an attitude of prayer. As the phoenix was the symbol of regeneration, the tuft of feathers on the back of its head might well symbolize the activity of the pineal gland or third eye, the occult function of which was apparently well understood by the ancient priestcraft. This is why you remember last week in the movie uh, Paul, the alien, and he cursed. I didn't talk about that, but he cursed and went to the girl, opened up her third eye, poured in all these images. She had an instant download. Now she has a new consciousness. Now, automatically, she wants to go fornicate with the guy she's with because she was raised by a man who believed the Bible. He's the bad guy. Masonry will be in a position to solve many of the secrets of his esoteric doctrine when it realizes that both its single and double-headed eagles are phoenixes. And that to all initiates, there it is. There it is. The double-headed eagle is really a phoenix. That's what Manley Hall said. And that to all initiates and philosophers, the phoenix is the symbol of the transmutation and regeneration of the creative energy, commonly called the accomplishment of the great work. The double-headed phoenix is the prototype of an androgynous man, just like I showed you. For according to the secret teachings, there will come a time when the human body will have two spinal cords, by means of which vibratory equilibrium will be maintained in the body. Let me explain, because I speak symbol. Let me explain what he just said. Remember, God has rules, and he put them in the 66th book of the Bible, which is the last one. And he said, For I testify to every man that heareth the words of the prophecy of this book, if any man shall add unto these things, God shall add unto him the plagues that are written in this book. If any man shall take away from the words of the book of this prophecy, God shall take away his part out of the book of life and out of the holy city and from the things which are written in this book. Here's what he just said. Just like 
just like pretend this is the Book of Mormon. The Mormons add books to the Bible. They add like another spinal cord because the spinal cord, the head is Christ. The head is heaven. The body is us down here in this world. The two lungs that we have are the Holy Spirit right here in this book that gives the body life. See, the spirit is down here in the body. Isn't that great? So how does the brain communicate to the body? How did I just raise my hand up and put my hand back down, hold my pen, moving this hand like this, talking to you? How does that all work? The brain sends signals down the spine. You have 33 bones in your spine. Mm. And on each spine bone, you have a bundle of nerves. One goes out to the right side, the other comes out to the left. Now, technically, that would be 66 nerve connections going to the body through the spinal cord. How does God talk to the body? Through the 66. How does God talk to the body? Through the 66. All right? Now, the bottom of your spinal cord in the sacrum, there's like only like, it's, instead of 33 splitting off into two, there's only 31 splitting off into two. So that's not quite 66. That's only, what is that, 62. You need four more, right? So it just so, ha it just so happens that there are two nerves that come out of the brain. One of them goes to both sides of the neck to control the movement of the head that's in the body. The other one is the vagus nerve, which comes out of the brain and goes down into your bowel, your stomach, your heart, which is why when you get, like, scared, all of a sudden you get sick to your stomach and your heart starts racing. Or when you experience some happiness, you feel it in your bowels because of the vagus nerve coming down. So that's the other four connections because they both go right and left. You have two more nerves that come down, go right and, go right and left. That's like the four Gospels coming down from heaven to fill our heart with joy. Isn't that so cool? So why add another spinal cord? What's it going to be connected to? A different head. A double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. Bum, bum, bum. There's the Phoenix again. Compare it with Manly, uh, with, yeah, Manly Hall. No, Fat Albert Pike's symbol. Ordo ab Kao. Kao is the pit. Ordo coming out of the pit. You have the double-headed eagle, which is a phoenix. You have a crown. You have the number 33 up there. See, it's another spinal cord. And then you have the 32 stars. Underneath it, the 33rd would be the double phoenix. Just like in the Bible, when you had one king and you had 32 kings with him. And they tried two attacks on the people of Israel. The first time they did it on a mountain, which was like Golgotha. And they lost. So the second time they said, well, he's the God of the mountain, but he's not the God of the valley. So they tried to defeat Israel in the valley, which is a picture of Armageddon. And they lost again because they were drunk. So think of places where the phoenix has shown up recently. You have the London Olympics closing ceremony. Take a look at this. It was all about... The phoenix, the rising of the phoenix. You even had these little dancers coming out. This phoenix coming down from heaven. See the pyramid in the back? Dun, dun, dun. First, before, before the phoenix ceremony at the London closing ceremony of the Olympics, take a look what they did. You have a cross, which is a chromosome, and in the centromere, which ties, which bundles the chromosomes together to make the X chromosome, in the center point of it, they're building a pyramid. Each one of these people represents the stone of the pyramid, just like on the back of the $1 bill. Amazing. 
and then you see now that was that was all created by man okay that was all created by man and a spirit led them but what man had the power to trap 33 miners in the heart of the earth where it was 95 degrees every or plus every day down there those miners were hot they were soaked in sweat and they were running out of water and food 69 days they were there that's a multiple of 13 and what rescued them did you see the movie I, I mean I watched this in real life and I watched the movie you know they embellish some things I get that that's what Hollywood does but it's the 33 and what saved them what saved them they dug a hole they made this capsule and they called it the Phoenix because it was to go down into the heat pull 33 miners out at a time one at a time the 33 miners were brought out of their pit after plan B drilling team drilled from September 5th to October 9th they drilled exactly 33 days did you know that now again what man did that it wasn't it was the spirit because literally the heart of this mountain they were underneath literally dropped right down on top of them trapped them all in man can't do that man can't do that spirits did that it was an initiation not just I mean the t-shirt they were wearing see the star on it the pentagram if I go back to let's see this picture here 33 stars rising back up out of the pit they were in after the drill team took 33 days to drill it's about a transformation by fire which is what's coming to this world how do I know well the symbols tell me but I have a more sure word of prophecy where the symbols are all explained first Peter chapter 1 verse 3 blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ which according to his abundant mercy hath begotten us again unto a lively hope by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead to an inheritance incorruptible and undefiled and that fadeth not away reserved in heaven for you who are kept by the power of God through faith unto salvation ready to be revealed in the last time wherein you greatly rejoice thou now for a season if need be you were in heaviness through manifold temptations that the trial of your faith being much more precious than of gold that perisheth though it be tried with fire might be found unto praise and honor and glory at the appearing of Jesus Christ whom having not seen ye love in whom though now ye see him not yet believing ye rejoice with joy unspeakable and full of glory receiving the end of your faith even the salvation of your souls Nebuchadnezzar made an image of gold and it was 60 cubits tall and six cubits wide and he told everybody fall and everybody fell except Shadrach Meshach and Abednego and what did Nebuchadnezzar do threw him in the fire were they burnt no. and who appeared Jesus and Nebuchadnezzar knew it the fourth he's not like a son of the gods he's the son of God and he knew it and it never affected them. they didn't even smell like smoke they went through the fire my question is are you prepared for that now your rapture theory may not allow for it okay but what if what if God hasn't really opened our eyes up to everything? I mean, it's, right, it's all right here. I believe it. But what if we go through the fire? Do we not believe that God 
will keep us safe. And our faith is much more precious than the God of gold that they're going to offer to this world. I don't see it fully how it's going to happen, but I guarantee you gold's involved in it. I guarantee you. And so, you know what the fire is? When all these angels get kicked out of heaven, when all these devils come up from the earth, smoke is everywhere. What are they made of? Fire. That's what our Bible says. Revelation 3.18, I counsel thee to buy of me gold tried in the fire. that Thou mayest be rich and white raiment, that thou mayest be clothed, and that the shame of thy nakedness do not appear, and anoint thine eyes with eye salve, that thou mayest see. See, he's giving us a different gold, a gold that doesn't ever perish. The gold of this world will. The gold of these gods will. Study gods of gold. Like I said, look into that in the Scripture because I think it has something to do with it. And the number 603 score and 6. And the fact that the children of Israel ate their God. Okay? 1 Peter chapter 4. Beloved, think it not strange concerning the fiery trial which is to try you as though some strange thing happened unto you. It's going to happen. What are we afraid of? What are we afraid of? If your faith is not sturdy enough to be tested, then it's not real faith. It didn't come from God. Because real faith that God gives us through His Word will pass the test. We'll still be believing. When others like, you pray for Betty Andreessen. I don't mean, she's still alive. I don't mean to be her enemy. But she's been deceived. That Phoenix is the Antichrist. And she bought into it. She was initiated so that her mouth becomes the mouthpiece of devils. Rejoice inasmuch as you are partakers of Christ's sufferings, that when his glory shall be revealed, you may be glad also with exceeding joy. If you be reproached for the name of Christ, happy are ye. For the spirit of glory and of God resteth upon you. On their part he is evil spoken of, but on your part he is glorified. Look at Revelation chapter 13. Because there's a beast coming up out of the earth. Remember, remember what the woman at Endor said. When Saul came to her and wanted her to conjure a familiar spirit, and all of a sudden this hooded, I can tell you that I've listened, I've listened to a lot of people talk about the UFO experiences. You know what many of them have said? That they've seen aliens, tall, white aliens, hooded so you can't see their face. That is exactly what the woman at Endor saw when she said, I saw gods coming up out of the earth. And Saul said, okay, what did they look like? I see a man old, he's covered with a mantle. And you have people seeing that right now. And the false prophet, where does he come from? He comes up out of the earth, just like the gods did at Endor. I beheld another beast coming up out of the earth, and he had two horns like a lamb. That's what this means. I did a teaching on this, a watchman broadcast. And he spake as a dragon, and he exerciseth all the power of the first beast before him, and causeth the earth and them which dwell therein to worship the first beast, whose deadly wound was healed. And he doeth great wonders, so that he maketh fire come down from heaven on the earth in the sight of men. Fire. How many of these wacky, wacky charismatic guys are all the time saying, oh God, send the fire down from heaven. We need the fire to come down from heaven. Are you so sure about that? Because that's exactly what the false prophet says. Fire, come down from heaven. Fire, fire, we need fire. We're on fire. You see, there's two different fires in the Bible. There's a fire that gives light, which is this, and a fire that destroys, which is that. 
He maketh fire to come down from heaven on the earth in the sight of men, and deceiveth them that dwell on the earth by means of those miracles which he had power to do in the sight of the beast, saying to them that dwell on the earth that they should make an image to the beast which had the wound by a sword and did live. I believe a day of fire is coming, and it's going to be a transformation for those who believe the Word of God. We will be transformed from death to life, for we are sons of God, and it doth not yet appear, but when He shall appear, we know we shall be like Him. And We're going to be transformed. We're going to be turned from green stalks to wheat shining like the sun, same color as the sun, right, which is Jesus. But the world also is going to be transformed by that fire. Only those green stalks are turning black, like night, like death, like darkness. The candle of man blown out, and they're going to be, they're going to get a consciousness transformation, all right. Because God is going to send them strong delusion. And where do you believe a lie at? In your hand? On your lips? No. In your brain, in your mind, and in your heart. And they're going to believe the lie that's being told. Transformation, a shift, a paradigm shift in consciousness is what's coming to this earth. Are you ready for it? Are you prepared for it? I hope you are. If not, I encourage you, call upon the name of the Lord. Download the free software. Just think of words that you think are in the Bible. Study them all through the scriptures. I just talked to a guy today, came up to visit, his eyes lit up when I mentioned the software. He said, I love that. He said, I just find, figure out words and phrases and I type them in and I search them all through the scriptures. I said, that's exactly how I study the Bible. And see, God will open your eyes to so many things that you've never thought of, never seen before. You think you got it all figured out because you watch YouTube, right? But then you start reading the Bible and God starts showing you things and you're all of a sudden you're going, wow, that's so cool. I want that for you. I want you to have the same joy that I get when I find things in the Word of God. There's nothing like it. So you are the reason I do what I do, because you are important to me, you're important to God, and I love you. And I know if I love you and I'm evil, you got to know God loves you too. All right, God bless you. For now, we're done with Betty Andreessen. We'll see where we're going to go from here. God bless you. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye.